Tonight, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is coming to you live from the American heartland is we're at the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas for BKFC 13. On tap, an absolutely loaded nine bout card in our feature fight at 175 pounds, David Rickles versus Cliff Wright. Our co-main 115 pounders, Nico Hernandez versus Chancey Wilson. And our main event for the heavyweight title, the champion Joey Beltran versus Marcel Stamps. Hey everyone, I'm Sean Wheelock. So glad that you're with us for our BKFC 13 free view. One prelim bout coming your way. We also will show you a bout from two weeks ago from the brand new Toe the Line Fighting Series. And then at the top of the hour, the way to watch and the only way to watch BKFC 13 live around the world is on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Eight fights on that card again. You will see the Bellator veteran David Rickles in our feature fight. Olympic bronze medalist Nico Hernandez in the co-main and the champion Joey Beltran looking for his first successful title defense against Marcel Stamps in our main event of the evening. We're in the American heartland. We're about a three hour drive west of Kansas City in Salina, Kansas. BKFC 13. We'll be talking about this on the broadcast this evening. Kansas is the only athletic commission in the world to have real time scoring. So what that means is that after every round, the fighters in their corners will know the three Kansas judges scorecards. We're now set to open this absolutely stacked card. Time now for the numbers. It is bout number one set at 125 pounds. And our tale of the tape is presented by Tiger Life Energy Drink. Miles McDonald versus Kendrick Latchman. The thing that stands out about this one, it looks like Kendrick has a little bit of a reach advantage, a little bit of a size advantage. Everything else being pretty same. Their fists are about the same size, weight's the same. Can't wait to watch this one. Kendrick Latchman, 14 pro MMA fights in his career, 13 pro boxing matches, including a six round unanimous decision loss versus Nico Hernandez in September 2017. Latchman, Chris, taking that fight on 48 hours notice, had a huge weight cut, and he was the first pro opponent to take Nico Hernandez the distance. And that's a big right. deal. I mean, Nico Hernandez is. He's a bronze medalist in the Olympics. You take a fight on 48 hours notice, you have a big weight cut. That's got to build your confidence. It's got to build your ego. It's got to let you know that you can compete at this level. And now he's in here doing bare knuckles. So a little bit different, but his hands are going to be very difficult to deal with, I'd have to believe. In October 2013, in amateur MMA, Kendrick Latchman defeated his opponent in this bare knuckle bout, Miles McDonald, by unanimous decision. Latchman said, from what I know about McDonald, albeit it was seven years ago, I am quicker and I am stronger. Yeah. Miles McDonald, five pro MMA bouts in his career, including one in Bellator and one in LFA. He is a United States Army veteran where he taught combatives in the U.S. Army. McDonald said of that loss, October 2013 versus Kendrick Latchman, he has a good jab, he cuts angles well, but McDonald said, my striking has improved, quote, 500% in that last seven years. I like his confidence, 500% seems like an awful lot, but that's fantastic. You really can't tell something from seven years ago. I would hate to see somebody really get too overconfident against that, because even if you fight somebody seven weeks later, they, that's going to be a totally different fight. Don't get too much false confidence over wins seven years ago. McDonald said, I believe Latchman will try to outpoint me from distance. I have to solve that distance, take away his time and space, make this an inside fight. To get us started, here's our outstanding ring announcer, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, from Tony's Pizza Event Center, live in Salina, Kansas. We are set for our opening preliminary fight of the night, live on the BKFC YouTube channel. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bare knuckle 125-pound division. Presented to you by Tiger Life, the cleaner energy drink. 
Introducing to you first, finding out of the red corner, tonight he wears winter camouflage. His official weight, 124.9 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 14 professional fights. Fighting out of Overland Park, Kansas, here is Kendrick the Uprising Latchman. Kevin, you ready? And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Kevin. Tonight, he wears black Kevin. and red. His official weight, 125.3 pounds. His MMA record stands at three victories opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Springfield, Missouri, by way of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is Miles McDonald. And our referee in charge of the action, Nick Behrens. The state of Kansas Gentlemen, has had legal pro bare knuckle fights before, up, but this is the debut of BKFC. Knuckle up! Go! The bell in round number one. Quick start for Miles McDonald. He's in the black trunks, camouflage trunks for Kendrick Latchman. And true to his word, McDonald coming inside, Chris. And that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to solve that distance problem right there. Stay away from that jab. Get inside where he can land his punches. And to the clinch, if you're new Work to bare knuckle, clinch. Work off the clinch. As long as it's an active clinch, Stop. you're Stop. throwing, then you Separate. can fight. Go. Referee Nick Barron's not seeing enough activity. That's the separation right back to it. 30 seconds gone, round number one. Oh, this is all bouts tonight, like scheduled for right. five two minute Fingers. rounds. Step in. Fingers. Step in. Fingers. No grabbing the wrist. Overhand right, misses from McDonald. Latchman. Working off of that jab from the southpaw stance again into the clinch. clinch. You see the overhook held by McDonald. Under and there, under and there. Every time Kendrick land that, lands that there. jab, I, I like to see Miles come back with power punches. Stop! Separate. Quick Go. break again from Nick Barron's, keeping this fight flowing. Overhand right, there's the counter right or right again from Kendrick Latchman. Like that. Now, Miles is doing a good job of throwing these hard punches, but he's got to work his way in before he can throw those. They're, they're, they're telegraphed otherwise. Uppercut just like off the mark, right on the exit for Latchman. Like Let's go, one, two, three. Baby. Man, make him miss he's, he's make really play. found a home for that jab already. Oh, he's parrying more of that jab. Latchman, as you see, loading up the left hand. Right. There's the long straight right jab. Mouse under the left eye of Miles McDonald. Straight one, two from Latchman. Good left hand on the end and a big right hand lands. Definitely took McDonald off of his striking line, Chris. Yeah, he's already cut it. Oh, good straight left right there. You can see Latchman with his body language growing in confidence in this is bare knuckle debut. Also the bare knuckle debut for McDonald and he has badly cut bridge of his nose and under his left eye. That's the end of round number one. I mean, you really have to like the way McDonald's comes out and, and, and He's throwing hard punches, but he's not working his way in. He's not jabbing to get inside. He's just throwing these big overhand Listen, rights. Right. They're telegraphed. They're easy to see. They're easy for Latchman to get out of the way and throw those jabs. I ain't go around you. He needs to set that up a little bit more, come behind with the hit. jab, and then throw those overhand yeah, rights, those left two. hooks. He's just waiting right now. They need to step out more for a 2 3 2 As far as Kendrick Latchman, I think he did exactly what he needed to do in that round. Just keep throwing the jab, find that distance range, and when he needs to, throw that too. You step out, you just go right down there and throw a short up a a long up a pass. Start, hang up, grab him. You can grab it, seek up the net. Again, coming up top of the hour, it's the BKFC main card. Eight fights on that main card. The only way to watch worldwide exclusively is on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Glad that you're with us watching live online worldwide. This is our free view, the preliminary bout. Two MMA veterans, Miles McDonald versus Kendrick Latchman, round number two. Man, if you look at that, in between rounds right there, you saw Miles McDonald already has two big cuts on his face. Right hand from Latchman, good right hand again. Latchman really stiff with that jab early on. And especially in this board, just those little jabs right there. They may not look like much, but they're busting his face open. Fingers in. McDonald said in our fighter meeting, I want to have a fast start, but it's Latchman who seems to be having the faster start in round one and definitely a faster start here in round number two. Like I said, I mean, Miles is doing a good job. He's just not coming behind any jabs. He's not setting anything up. He's throwing wild punches. And Kendrick's able to counter him. 
Dutchman again with the right hand, fainting the polo, and now the left cross to the body, straight right hand again. Lead left hook misses for Miles McDonald. If McDonald doesn't start start setting up some of these punches first, he's, he's just going to continue to take a beating right now. That's his best chance right now is to come behind that jab, throw a double, triple jab if he has to. He's pawing it out there, but he's not really throwing it. 55 seconds remaining round number two. Chris McDonald said, I think Latchman will try to outpoint me from distance. You can outpoint from distance in boxing, but in bare knuckle, when you're outpointing, you're busting up your opponent. Exactly. Big difference. Oh, good Huge flurry. McDonald in real trouble. And down he goes. First knockdown of this fight. Three, that was the body punches four, right there that put him down. You could tell five, how that hurt him. Six. Seven, eight. You're good to continue. There's the mandatory eight count from referee Nick Barons. And I would not be surprised to see, yep, going right back to that body. This isn't like with a boxing glove. You hit somebody with a bare knuckle, it digs into him deep. Latchman again to the body, trying to finish in round number two. McDonald trying to hold on, and down he goes again. That body push, it's like he just got stabbed. That is it. Nick Barons waves off this fight, and the win for Kendrick Latchman. Beautiful Good. performance Good. right there. He did everything like he needed yep. to do. He kept his distance of time. Right. He waited for the Copy. right opportunity. He landed body punches. Perfect. Miles McDonald visibly upset with Nick Barron's protesting Barron's stoppage, but Nick yeah. Barron's feeling yeah. McDonald had enough down twice here in round number two. I, I just didn't see any other way that this was going to go. If he wasn't going to come behind that jab, he was going to continue to take punishment. Hello, buddy. It's a nice moment between these two fighters. Again, they've now fought twice. A win in AMI MMA for Kendrick Latchman, October 2013. A win in pro bare knuckle tonight, but no animosity between these two. Counter punching. Look at these combinations. Oh, right in the stomach, right in the. Uh, you can just tell that took it out of him. And look at that. He just saw an opening. He hit it with that hard right hand to the body. That's it. Nice back flip, too. He certainly gets an A-plus for celebration, <laughs> and I think that's an A-plus performance for Kendrick Latchman. And, and that look on his face right there says it all. That is the flag of his native Belize, Latchman American born, but very, very proud of his Belize heritage. I told you, second round. Turn around for me real quick. That was a fun fight, Chris. 125 pounders throwing down. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 41 seconds into round number two for your winner by TKO, Kendrick, the uprising Latchman. You know what I really liked about that fight was Kendrick Latchman showed exactly what you need to do to be successful in this sport. He landed a lot of good jabs. He worked the body. He stayed relaxed. He waited for his opponent to make mistakes, and then he capitalized on them. Miles needs to go back and kind of watch this, learn how to throw some jabs, get inside, and then throw your power punches. He's looking like he was hitting a lot of body shots. That's why I let him Kendrick go. Latchman has had success in pro MMA and in pro boxing, and now he finds success in his pro bare knuckle debut. Hard fought, well fought between both men. Latchman just too much. In our opening bout of the evening, the winner by way of second round TKO, Kendron Latchman defeats Miles McDonald. Tonight, all subscribers to the Bare Knuckle TV app will receive 50% off select BKFC merchandise. Go online to bareknuckleshop.com and use the promo code BKTV app. Look at the pose of Kendall Grove to start this round. There's a sporting touch of gloves from Abramski. All business from Grove. Opens with a double jab to the fifth and final round. Sean, you can see the body language, just two different pictures. Bramski had a lot of self-belief. He felt that he was not here as an opponent, that he could really record this upset. Now you see him double. Big shot, and down goes a 
Bramski, the first knockdown of this fight. And it looked like he was getting closer. He was double jabbing his way in. And he got caught up with the one, two. Clean by Grove. Give me hands, please. Here we go. There was any doubt that Abramski needed a finish to win this fight. That erased it. The <laughs> knockdown right now, Grove on a 10-8 round. Perhaps pitching a shutout across the board. Abramski is going to have to open up and take real chances now in the closing stages of this fight. 65 seconds remaining. Again, Abramski seeing this as the biggest opportunity of his fighting career. But just not finding a way through Kendall Grove. Look at Grove using a triple jab to get in. One, two. Grove really looking good with his with his striking, with his punching in this fight. That's been the difference. Extremely technical performance for Grove thus far. Reporting the knockdown here in round five. Circling out again. Another good left hand. Ramsky, I think that was self-affirmation, trying to pump himself up. Yeah, you got one guy trying to get lucky, and you got one guy that uh, has educated hands. Big difference. This is a mismatch. Almost a hammer fist there thrown by Abramski to no effect. Missed badly. Bramsky now with the half run. This is exactly the fight that he wanted. Trying to do it in the final 10 seconds of this battle. Bramsky could not find this range absolutely champ until now. That is the end of this bout. And the both fighters to toe the line. They're up to scratch. The bell in round number one. Both fighters stepping forward immediately. Black and white trucks for Christine Faria. Black, red, and gold trucks for Jeff Tate. A lot of action in this fight, opening up the first round. Smirk on the face of Faria. Big right hand, counter right, double right from Tate. Both fighters throwing long, straight, and hard punches. Nice left. The right from Tate. That's a Faria off her striking line, circling back. It's Tate now coming forward. Tate's going a nice one, too. Very long, very straight as Jennifer Tate thus far. Tate, you see the open hands looking to parry punches. Just with the left. Maria trying to circle outside, coming with the lead left hook. With ten remaining, round number one. A lot of head movement. Footwork from both fighters. There's a big left hand landed by Tate into the body with the right. Both of these ladies know they were around the ring. You can see the intensity they're fighting with. No intimidation here. They're ready to get it on. Slight knot on the forehead, a hematoma. Already. Left side of the forehead on Christine Faria's face. Confirmation of that right there. Open-handed style of Tate again, trying to parry those punches. 30 seconds remaining round one. Big uppercut. Best sequence offensively for Faria in this fight. Now turning on oh. the pressure. Down goes Jennifer Tate. She's hurt bad. That's it. Bill Clancy waves up this fight. Call that a come from behind win in round number one for Christine Faria. Take control of the action from distance, right there. She got hit in the nose and it stunned her, and it gave Ferrara every opportunity to get in close where she does best. Put her, put her to rest, that was it. Nice right hook, left hand. Oh my God. Clean shots, and down she goes. Beautiful, beautiful boxing. A bare knuckle from Ferrara. Coming up tonight in our co-main event, 2016 U.S. Olympic bronze medalist in boxing, Nico Hernandez versus LFA veteran Chansey Wilson. Chris, you and I have seen the rapid evolution in not quite two and a half years of the return of professional bare knuckle fighting. What we have learned amongst many things is that if you come in as a high level boxer and you do not comprehend the fact that this is not just boxing without gloves, this is a unique sport. The same way that a lot of, I think, high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts found out the hard way in the <laughs> late 1990s that MMA was not just Brazilian jiu-jitsu without a gi. 
it's not going to work out well for you. Now, Nico Hernandez was a high school wrestler in Wichita, Kansas. He told me in our fighter meeting he's extensively worked the clinch, but you look at Luis Hernandez. He was an undefeated boxing prospect. We had a BKFC in July, lost to Bobby Taylor. Look at Pauli Malignaggi, an outstanding world champion, loses to Artem Lobov. It's about understanding what you have as your skill set and incorporating it into this new skill set. That's why I find our co-main so intriguing. Well, it's not only about understanding it. It's about working on it because you could understand it, but it's different until you actually experience it. If you don't really go out there and train it, it's not going to work. You need to be bringing in fighters. You need to be bringing in grapplers. You need to be bringing in people who are going to do that clinch work because if you think it's not going to be different and you get it in the first time, you're going to be looking around in the ring like, what's going on? Why am I so tired? Why am I getting hit from different angles? I'm not used to because we've seen it happen before a lot of the boxers. I think they think I'm a good boxer I'm better than this guy at this sport It's not the same thing and they are starting to realize that I think you go and you look and you see how many people have lost They're figuring that out and they're trying to figure out how to how to defend it and, the, and I think they're learning We did not know exactly what we were going to see when David Feldman brought that bare knuckle fighting June 2nd 2018 the conventional wisdom was that boxers would have the edge over MMA fighters, but the opposite is played true. <laughs> I think you're in the best position of anybody because of your outstanding MMA career, including 20 fights in the UFC. And I think what's not that well known, you were 13-1-1 one one as a pro boxer. When you started fighting bare knuckle and you started in England, then came to BKFC, did you feel, Chris, that your MMA skills translated better or your boxing skills translated better? You know, it was, it was a good combination of both, to be honest with you. Uh, I would have to say probably the boxing was very helpful, but it's different with the MMA. You have to have that. You have to have that element of it because it's different. It's raw. It's gritty. You're in there. It's not the same as a pure boxing match. So you need to have both, and I think you need to really train as this is not the same sport. It's not either one of those sports. And if you don't understand that, I'm glad to see that American Top Team right now has gone out and they're making their own bare knuckle division. A lot of more places are going to start doing this because those are what you have to do in order to be successful at this sport. So now two Olympians on the BKFC roster, Hector Lombard, who of course so outstanding <laughs> in MMA, but he was a judo player for Cuba at the 2000 games. He did not medal. And again, Nico Hernandez winning a bronze in boxing for the United States in the 2016 games. You will see him tonight in our co-main event versus Chancey Wilson at 115 pounds. Perhaps you might be interested in making a wager on that fight. Well, we do have odds courtesy of betonline.ag. Odds, in fact, for our feature bout of the evening, the co-main and our main event. You see the lines, again, the feature bout, Dave Rickles versus Cliff Wright. The co-main, Nico Hernandez versus Chancey Wilson. And our main event, the champion, Joy Beltran versus Marcel Stamps for the BKFC heavyweight title. Now, a lot of people don't understand what this means. What this means with Dave Rickles being minus 325, you have to bet $325 to win 100. Clifford right there being the underdog, if you bet $100, you would win $250 if he wins. So that, that's what the minus and the plus means. Again, our, our betting odds are lying courtesy of betonline.ag. Glad that you're with us. We're live tonight in Salina, Kansas. And oh, by the way, we've already talked about it. You will see the implementation of real-time scoring. The state of Kansas is the only athletic commission, not just in the U.S., but in the world that uses real-time scoring. What that means is that after every round, the fighters and their corners will know the three judges' scorecards. So glad that you're with us. It is BKFC 13. You are watching us worldwide. Inside right here is exactly where Vestate wants it right now. He needs to do that to try and slow the pace down. There's talked about the head movement to get to the pocket. That's exactly what we've oh, seen. It, Game, it. set, match. Wow. And walk away. One punch knockout to finish this fight and the win for Caleb Harris. And, and this right here, look at this right hand straight on the button. Perfect. That's a tough thing when both guys were going for their punch. But stop they going for the uppercut. He just got beat to the punch. I'm a former professional boxing referee. Mm. You're trained as a referee. Watch how the fighter falls. Look at Bill Clancy. Immediately, he's waving off the fight. He sees how Vistante is falling face first. Well, anytime when you don't put your hands down, you know that you are unconscious on your way down. They're not going to let that fight go on no matter what. If somebody slips on ice or slips on water, instinctively and reflexively, they put their hands down. You saw Vistante was absolutely out face first. That's just a phenomenal performance by Caleb Harris. Oh. And that's a really gritty performance in defeat for Jonathan Vistante. Under both eyes. 
Very interesting opening round and that Henry largely has had the offense, but Marlboro has landed the big shot, but now he goes down in the final seconds of round one. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. He will not be saved there. And a come from behind first round victory for Quentin Henry. And once again, once he was able to establish that jab, he was able to land good nasty punches just like that. Hit him right on the button, exactly what he talked about earlier today. He wanted to set up the jab to land that right hand. Here's another look at it. Bam, right on the button. See the mouthpiece flying out as well. Referees in all combat sports are trained to watch how does a fighter go down when they're knocked down. You see human beings just are not built to fall that way. Marlboro, despite an outstanding effort in round one, taking too much from that shot, and that is the end. The winner! In emphatic fashion and come from behind fashion by way of first round knockout, Quentin Henry defeats Bubba Mulbrew. Worry about the power, just land punches. Huge overhand him. right, then the left, a big left hand. Gonzaga looking to finish here in round number two. Ferocious uppercut. Oh, wow. Down goes Silva on the left hand. And the referee immediately waves it off. He's seen enough. Those punches were huge. The win with emphasis in our main event goes to Gabriel Gonzaga. Now he's already hurt. He's landed everything he's thrown at him right now. Just took one clean shot. Uppercut, and that was it right there. He's hurt. One more. Oh, that left hand after the uppercut. A lot of times when you land the uppercut, it stands him straight upright. You'll see the uppercut land here in a minute. After he lands that uppercut, his head is just a city target just waiting to get hit. Look at the right hand of Antonio Silva right trying to keep himself up, Boom. holding the top rope, reaches for that top rope, eats the left hand, and that is game, set, match. And watch, when Susie lands this uppercut right here, he sees those hands are, he throws a right uppercut as soon as he lands that. Boom, that head straight up. Like you said, trying to hold on, but once he got hit with that left hand, there's nothing he could do. Ferocity in the finish for Gabriel Gonzaga. And, and throwing hard punches the entire time. He's got to be careful doing that. He's landing the more. Oh, Huge right wow. hand. I think they might call down again, right and that is it. A lightning strike win for Gustavo Trujillo. Wow. What a right hand he landed. Put him down. He hit so hard in Rob Morrow. His head bounced off the canvas. Great stoppage right there by the referee because he was just going to get hurt even more. There was no way his head was in it after getting. A shot like that, head bouncing off the canvas, really shows that you were not only hurt, but you were almost knocked out at that point. And in his home state. Oh, for sure. I don't know if you noticed when they uh, announced your Kansas guy, not one cheer. <laughs> Uppercut, almost a bolo punch, and the counter shot. Down goes Stevenson, and he takes the count, and he wobbles. And there's that big, giving the count. There's that big right hand we talked about. You know it's coming. Sometimes it's harder to stop than you think. Harris is still hurt right now. Kenny needs to come with some more big right hands. If you see, there it was right there. That's that's it. That's that fine. might be game, set, match. Face first for Stevenson as he falls. He's not there. His feet are not there. If he lets his fight go on, okay. Clancy waves it off. Just no ability to get out of the way. Still hurt. He got hit hard. Face planted on the ground. It's not really the same when you get up from the first time and your legs aren't there. You're you're not reacting well. You see punches coming, but your body's not moving. I'm not sure if Kenny Lee Sale was watching the monitor backstage for our opening bout of the pay-per-view when Adrian Miles disqualified for the illegal punch to the ground at West Combs because you can see Lee Sale thinks about throwing and then pulls it back. That's a good point right there, Hey, I thought, I'm winning this fight, I don't want to get disqualified. It's hard when you got that MMA background, sometimes it just takes over, you're going to jump in and finish the fight, but it's already finished. The Bare Knuckle TV app is now here. Watch live BKFC fights and get unlimited access to the full library of past events, plus fighter interviews, behind the scenes content, the latest news and more, available on all smartphones and on most streaming devices. Download Noah now at bktvapp.com.
Last month, the Toe the Line Fight Series made its debut live and exclusively on the Bare Knuckle TV app. In the main event of the eight bout card, Teddy Webster faced Frank Tate in the heavyweight division. We now take you back to that outstanding fight, which took place September 26th in Tunica, Mississippi. With me on commentary is Joe Warren. Toe the Line 1. Legacy Promotions presents the debut of Toe the Line Fight Series. We're at the Rockets Tunica <laughs> Arena and Expo Center. Buckle outside in. of Memphis and Tunica, Mississippi. The bell in round number one. Red trunks for Teddy Webster. Black and purple trunks for Frank oh. Tate. Big shots from Tate. Straight to the clinch he goes. Separation from referee Wayne Spinola. Right to the body. These are big shots being thrown by Tate. Just missed with that right hand. Yeah. Still missing with that right to the body. Taking his time, though, bringing his feet back, not rushing the shots. Tate. Oh, Robert jumping hook lands. Oh, that right hand landed through from Webster. Webster fighting out of the single collar tie to half tie plug. There's the clinch now from Tate to get the separation from Spinola. Make no mistake, that was a defensive clinch by Tate. Just throwing down, boys. They both said they'd rather fight for money than go to jail. Straight right hand from Teddy Webster. We thought this would be a good fight. It's a really good fight thus far. Yes, very good. Foot movement, play, placement with their hands are right on the money. I'd like to see both of them try to go to the body here. Lead left hook, nothing there from Tate. Tate using a rangefinder jab, no real commitment to it. Just trying to move forward. Left hook, nothing there from Tate. Webster showing a lot of patience now. 35 seconds remaining round number one of our main event. Webster to the inside. Tate staying really patient. He's flat footed and stepping, walking in with that jab. Maybe puts two jabs together and he's going to get that right hand land. That's right a hand lands one. there on cue, Joe, from Frank Tate. Getting late here in round number one. Frank Tate's bleeding a little bit from his mouth. Both fighters have landed big punishing shots here in the opening rounds. Out of the clinch, back we go into the open space. Stepping right hand and misses over the top from Tate. We are headed to round two. They need to take some power off those punches. Try to put their hand, land their hands on them a little bit more. I think both fighters did a great job that round. Conditioning looked well. I thought, I didn't think we'd be making it out of the first round, personally. Good, you played, that's good. good. Thanks for working, thanks for working. Deep breath, deep breath. That double jab, Strange song. They both spit and stuff out of their mouth. <laughs> this is great. Move to your right. He's, he's orthodox all the time. Move to your right all the time. Okay. He's orthodox all the time. Go to your right all the time. Go to your right all the time. Seconds out. Both fighters towing the line back up to scratch. Total line. Sporting touch of hands, call of knuckle up from Wayne Spinola, right back to it. Webster getting busy with his jab to open the second round. There's the jab from Tate. And Webster is the more accomplished boxer here. Nice, go to the body. Controlling the head, Frank Tate. There's the right hand, backs off Teddy Webster. If you knew nothing about these two fighters and you just looked at this, you can tell oh, Webster that comes out of boxing right, and right on the chin. And Tate comes out of MMA. Separation from Wayne Spinola. He nearly took a right hand. There's such a contrast in the movement, the strength. So styles. much excitement in this place right now. I'm telling you, the fans are loving this. They're screaming, they're all on their feet. Tate stepping in, trying to cut off the ring. Putting Webster against the ropes. So using the underhook. 65 seconds remaining round two. Webster bearing to the body. Wayne Spinola. 
soft warning in referee speak, telling Webster, stop punching when I say stop. Tate just keeps missing with that right hand right over the top of his head just because he's a little bit shorter. Webster. Tate loading up the right hand, misses with that over the top, misses again over the top. Good head movement from Webster, but again finds himself with his back against the ropes. Eats the uppercut on the right hand, another right. Right to the body now yeah. from Pat Frank Tate. From the single collar tie back, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. Oh, firing from yes. Teddy Webster. I love it, I love it. Teddy Webster standing in the corner saying, come over here. Tate needs to keep that jab out. Keep that jab going to body. The clinch from Frank Tate, again, more of a defensive clinch, gets the separation, gets the restart. Overhand right again, but Webster keeps ducking under that big right hand of Tate. And you can see Webster using the technique of boxing, staying in the back corner, making Tate move into him so he can land strikes. We're headed to round number three. You're seeing these big boys get after. Their conditioning is very high level also. Usually at this point with two guys over 250, it's a problem. You feel it? Slow it back. All things have worked on. You feel it? Slow it back. Frank, Frank. Early, early, early uppercut. Throw that right uppercut right behind your left hand. Doesn't matter what you throw. Three, four, three, four, three, four. Throw the quarter when you're coming in. Throw the quarter when he's coming in. He's got it in. You're watching Teddy Webster versus Frank Tate from Toe the Line One, which took place last month in Tunica, Mississippi. We're back with you live from Salina, Kansas, BKFC 13. Coming up top of the hour, it's our eight fight main card, culminating with our main event. The champion Joey Beltran looking to successfully defend his bare knuckle fighting championship heavyweight title as he faces Marcel Stamps. The only way to watch BKFC 13 is worldwide exclusively and live on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Joining Chris Lytle and myself, Sean Wheelock, on tonight's broadcast is Brian Sosha. Glad to be here too tonight, Sean. I mean, this is such an exciting event already. Love and watching Toe the Line, but I have with me, he's challenging for the BKFC heavyweight title tonight against Joey Beltron, the swift man himself. What's up, Warren? How y'all doing? What's up? What's going on, man? So uh, you are the calmest I've ever seen you going into one of the biggest fights of your life. How are you feeling right now? Uh, man, I'm, I'm feeling awesome, man. I'm feeling great. Uh, put a lot of time in, a lot of work. Uh, now it's time to do work. Well, people call you the best pure athlete here in BKFC. Do you think that's going to make a difference tonight? Uh, it's, they didn't say in fighting. They said best pure athlete in BKFC. Um, I do think it will make a difference. Um, I have, like I said, a couple things different that your normal guy wouldn't do. I'm a little faster, a little quicker. Uh, I think with his size and what, where is, I guess where he came in at, it actually uh, plays to my advantage. I think the only thing that he really can do is lay on me and uh, try to weigh me down. So uh, athletic-wise, I have to, you know, find a way to stay on the end and um, um, keep him moving. Well, he does keep moving. Joey's known for just eating punches. He'll keep coming, he keep coming, keep coming. Does that concern you? Uh, it doesn't. If you want to keep coming, he can keep coming, and I'm going to keep throwing. So at the end of the day, if you want to keep coming, he can keep coming. So there's some concern online. I've been reading social media by the fans uh, that when it comes to you, uh, they're wondering simply, have you gone up two weight classes? Have you bit off more than you can chew? I haven't. I normally walk around like 210 anyway, so it made it easy. I didn't have to cut weight. I get to eat as much as I want to eat uh, and still have fun and just work on uh, molding the things that I've been, you know, messed up on. All right, and uh, you know, there's TVs all over the building. Joey may be watching this now, so could you look directly at the camera and please deliver a message to the champion, Joey Beltran? I mean, like everybody say, man, that's, he's the king of the jungle. I'm the young lion. I'm coming out to get that uh, gold strap. Well, we're very excited to see what happens tonight, and uh, it's going to be a great main event. And you know what? Speaking of great main events, from toe the line one, which happened last week in Mississippi, let's get back to round three. Getting the sportsmanship. The touch of hands, round number three off the scratch line. I do love the scratch line. You're right, me too. We see Webster, he's starting to make the, he's starting to make Tate come into him. He wants to walk in. I think he wants to land that overhand right again. Yep, yeah, right there. We just saw it hit his chin. Big wide swings from Webster. It's a great fight, Sean. Outstanding. Tate again trying to get inside off of the jab. You're seeing the boxing technique here from Weber. 
He's making Tate come into him so he can lay it, walk into an overhand right. See those bonding shots? Those are accumulating blows that for Kite just missed from Tate. But Webster Joe in these situations keeps bearing that right hand to the body. Yep. And Tate's corner keeps screaming uppercut. There we go. There man. it was on the naked uppercut. That one landed with the rear right hand. Webster. Swinging big. Takes Tate off balance on those wild overhand rights. They don't have to be gorgeous to be effective. Nope. Swing and a miss with that left hand. Tate right back to the inside. Using a waist inch now is Frank Tate. In the clinch, he needs a fake, he needs an overhand body. Head body hook, head body hook, fake head body hook. Reset of feet, Webster off his back foot. Which we've seen, been seeing him go body over hook to a clinch. You can see heavy breathing from Frank Tate. There's the left hand that gets through. Both of these guys are landing serious power shots. Right uppercut, left hand, straight right. Good I combination from head. Tate. I just looked at his head. He had to wipe something off my forehead, folks. There is blood all over our commentary <laughs> position. Final seconds, round number three. He just punched the camera. Okay, like, did you see that? We are headed to round four, <laughs> maybe with one less camera. Yeah, the excitement just builds. Hey, you gotta find it. You gotta find it. Hey, Matt, let's go. Hey, let's go. Come on. Hey, fight through this. You hear me? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Hey, don't worry. Hey, like I said, hey, let's, let's do this. Hey, let's finish this fight. If we finish this fight, we're good. You hear me? Hey, you're not a quitter. All right, let's, hey, finish this fight. Main thing is, keep your hands up. I'm dying. Come on. Hey, this is what we dig. It's hey. Let's go. Hey, he's tired too. He's tired too. He's tired too. Come on, Tate. Hey. He's only like that. I don't care how big it is. Hey. Hey. Put your hands up. Remember, pick your hands up. Okay? Get close together. Drive. Go get it. I've been in this spot many times, Sean. Where I'm like, coach, I'm tired. He's like, he's tired too. You gotta bite down and get busy. This is fighting for your life now, folks. To the fourth round we go of our main event, Teddy Webster versus Frank Tate. Tate back to work with the jab. Webster, you see the lateral movement. Lands the right hand as he was moving backward, did Webster. Tate waving folks Webster forward. forward. I don't think you understand how hard these punches are landing. Straight left hand for Webster. <laughs> are just thudding yep. shots. For someone that hasn't been to one of bare knuckle fight this ring, you can, the sound is so much different. When the, when the punch lands in the face without a glove on, it's a whole different sound than with a glove on. You can sort of hear it on our broadcast. You can definitely hear it when you're in person. It's stark. These are two great athletes. How can you last hook by Webster? We talked about this. Webster is bringing him in. He's leading him. He's luring him into that corner so he can throw that overhand right. Tate continues to try to walk down Teddy Webster. Webster switches stance, playing the role of the counter puncher against the position of Frank Tate. 55 seconds remaining round four. We've been talking about going to the body and finishing with that uppercut. There he takes it and listens to his corner. There's that right to the body again from Webster, who's thrown that very well in the clinch throughout this fight. You see the movement from Webster, changing angles, pulling Tate back to the center of the ring. Very athletic. These are two very talented fighters. Step in with the left hand by Tate. That was effective. He holds the waist cinch, the push off from Webster, creating the space in the distance. Final seconds now, round number four. Huge swings to the counter, one, two from Tate. Tate's in the clinch, he's got uppercut. Keep uppercut, get a little distance with his hips. Webster attacked to the body with the right hand. Look him up, look him up. The bell into the fifth and final round we go. I never thought we'd make it here, buddy. <laughs> Super excited. That is the baddest man on the planet. Two division Bellator world champion and Greco Roman world champion Joe Warren. I'm Sean Wheelock. You're a witness for Toe the Lion. You got one little scratch and that's it. It's barely doing nothing. Come on, man. Hey, let's win this.
swing this. We went too hard. Come on. Switch back over. Get in. This is where our coaches come in. We're live in Salina, Kansas, BKFC 13. We'll have the fifth and final round of the Webster Tate bout, but again, Brian Sosha. Well, we are live here, Sean. Thank you for that. And I have the man himself, we call him the king of the jungle, taking on the young lion tonight. Excuse me. Just give me the mic. Give me the mic. You gave an interview to Joey and Marcel, right? Watch out. Watch out. You gave an interview to Joey and Marcel, right? And you said Joey was the first heavyweight champion of Bare Knuckle FC? That's a, yeah, that's exactly what you said. That's a fucking line. You know it. So right here on this camera, yeah, I, I need you to apologize to me right now. You got it. You got it. If I did say that, my apologies. I, it might have come out wrong. I apologize. Pure apologies. Thank you. If I did say that, I apologize. Thank you. Very that's sorry. all I wanted. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. That. Thank you. I apologize. Come on over, Joey. Come on over, Joey. All right. So now that we got that out of the way. Joey Beltran here with me. He's the current BKFC heavyweight champion of the world. And you're taking on Swift Marcel Stamps tonight. And there's people talking about how he's the young lion, I was saying. You're the current king of the jungle, and he's trying to take you down. Do you think that being young like that is going to play into his favor? Is that going to hurt him being young in the fight game? Uh, nah, man. There's nothing really that has anything to do with age or experience. Uh, you know, what I'm going to do to him is going to be unlike anything that he's ever had to go through in his life. And, uh, you know, that's bottom line. That's not my opinion. That's just facts. Now, do you think, Joey, again, being younger than you in the fight game, you've seen a lot. You've fought a lot of different people. Uh, he hasn't fought as many people. So do you think that's going to – is he going to show you anything that you've maybe never seen? I mean, honestly, man, at this point in my career, I'd be really surprised and I'd be really excited. I'm like, fuck, man, that guy was really good. <laughs> you know, but I, I mean, dude, once again, these are not fucking facts. I mean, these are not my opinion. I'm not fucking stroking myself off. These are facts. I've been all over the world, four continents, three different fucking weight classes, UFC, Bellator, and back. So bottom line, I hope he does show me something new. Well, we're going to see what happens. And as I did with Joey, um, or excuse me, with Joey, as I did with Marcel, there's TVs all over this building, so everybody's watching. Could you look directly into that camera and deliver a message to Marcel Stamps about tonight and what's going to happen? Marcel Stamps, man, I hope you're ready to fucking go. I hope you're ready to come out here and put on a show for these good people in Kansas. And uh, fucking strap up and hold on, homie. Well, we're, we're really happy to uh, have you here, and we're happy to see what's going to the fight tonight, the main event. Looking forward to that as we toss it back to Toe the Line, live from Mississippi, in the exciting final round. Fifth and final round of our main event, Toe the Line 1. Buckle in, folks. Fifth round, main event. Oh. Cutting the distance, cutting the angle is Frank Tate. I'm surprised that they're not more physically damaged. Both men have given and received massive power punches in this fight. Both these guys are studs. If you're not enjoying this fight, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> Baron Uncle is not for you. This is outstanding. I'm so man. impressed with the conditioning of these two athletes right now. They've been thrown as hard as they can for five rounds now. Look at you, right hand legs from Webster. <laughs> Tate, you see the pressure. You see the MMA experience of Tate. Got caught, came immediately to the inside. Are you saying it's ruled a knockdown, the first knockdown of this fight? And Tate takes the count from Wayne Spinola. And what we say, he was a boxer. He made him walk into the corner and hit him with an overhand right. In a very, very close fight, that could be the difference maker on the three Mississippi judges' scorecards. 45 seconds remaining. Fifth and final round. Neither Teddy fighter Walker. has slowed down. Phenomenal pace set and maintained by these two powerful heavyweights. Weber and Tate, this great fight. Straight punches, there's the big right hand by Tate, the uppercut. Weston now trying to hold on, then Axis with the big right hand. Tate claims he was punched in the back of the head. Fight on, says Wayne Spinola. So focused, look at that. He's Down the right. stretch we come. Both fighters looking for one more significant punch. There is Teddy's punch right there, leading to having him walk back into that corner, laying overhand right. Tate coming forward. 
Rose are looking for the counter, and there it is on the right hand. Snapped the chin of Tate into the clinch, the separation, the bell, the end of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, all you folks in the building, do me a favor, make some noise for these boys. That's how you do a main event. And ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Wilkie scores about 48 to 46. Webster. Judge Clancy scores about 48 46 for Tate. And Judge Kane scores about 47 47. Declare this bout a majority draw. Actually, a split draw. Yeah, I don't know if the fans are going to push through me here and, and just rush this ring or what. Announced as a majority draw, but correctly, that's a split draw. So one judge having it 48 46 for Webster. The second judge having it 48 46 for Tate. And the third judge having it 47 47. So despite recording the lone knockdown in this fight, Teddy Webster dropping Frank Tate in the fifth and final round. Rule baddest man a split draw. I can't wait to see that one again. Let's run that one one more time. Chris Hart fought a split draw. And Dave Feldman, after the fight, the BKFC founder and president announced the rematch will take place not in a toe-of-the-line fighting series bout, but in a bare-knuckle fighting championship bout. Well, I think that's definitely well-deserved. If you watch that fight, great fight between two big guys. And I don't think people realize how tiring that is. That's tiring for little guys, let alone guys who weigh 250 pounds. That, all that muscle takes a lot of oxygen, a lot of good punches landed. Uh, both guys did their thing, and it was just a great fight. you got to see who wins that fight. They have to run it back. It was a really interesting contrast of styles. You could see trying to stay on the outside was Tate Webster coming to the inside and made for an outside standing five round bout yeah but I mean there was no no conclusion I feel like I want to see more you know we got to see the end of that thing because uh, nobody won so we have to have it do it again that was our main event of toe the line one you watched it exclusively on the bare knuckle TV app it's toe the line fighting series two you can see it from Plant City Florida Friday night October 16th the card will feature UFC veteran Mike Kyle in his bare knuckle debut versus knockout artist Bobo O'Bannon in the heavyweight division again you can watch the toe the line fighting series and toe the line 2 live and exclusively right here on the bare knuckle TV app if you don't have the app download it now bktvapp.com and the only way to watch tonight's BKFC 13, which begins live, top of the hour, is on the app again. Download it now, bktvapp.com. Eight bouts headed your way from Salina, Kansas. Chris Lytle and I will see you top of the hour for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 13.